Hello, in this video we're going to talk about vectors. A vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. So for example, wind would be a vector quantity. You could talk about a wind that is coming out of the north at 10 miles per hour. Similarly, you could talk about velocity of a particle as being a vector. The velocity might be 5 meters per second and going in a particular direction. And you might have also encountered forces. A force is a vector. It's got both a magnitude and a direction. Okay, let's take a look at this picture. Um, it looks like there are many vectors plotted in the xy plane, but in fact all of these little arrows, all of these little vectors represent the same vector. Right? They all have, so let's say all of these vectors, all vectors in this picture or in this plot have the same direction and the same magnitude. And so in some sense I really only have plotted one unique vector here. So to avoid confusion about you know where a particular vector might lie we often talk about vectors as being standard position vectors. So a vector is in standard position if the vector has its initial point, its starting point at the origin, and the terminal point is given at some point p. Okay, let me show you what I mean by an example. So let's look at a standard position vector. So we're going to start at the origin and we end at some point. So this is a standard position vector. I might call this vector v. Is a standard position vector. And the reason it's a standard position vector is that the initial point is right here at the origin. Right? That was important. And then the terminal point is given at some point P, so we could call this terminal point, this ending point, maybe it's over 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2, or something like that. So we could say point P, point P is over 4, up 2. And so one way of describing this vector V would be to say, hey, V is given by these coordinates 4, 2, meaning that's the terminal point of the vector. Okay, so some notation for vectors. Uh, you will commonly see either a big bold faced letter like a bold V. And, you know, as a human writing that, that's a pretty gross looking V. But our textbook uses the bold faced uh, V and U in sort of notation. But I will commonly write a V with an arrow over it to denote a vector. You might also see the vector defined by its terminal point like we did above. So there are angled brackets. So let's notice the angled brackets. That's important notation. Um, and the arrow over the top of the vector, that is also important to denote a vector. There are some special vectors that you will encounter. So these look like i, and i is a standard basis for uh, either two space or three space. So you might see this written as a one, zero, and your standard position vector j may be written as zero, one. Sometimes you see those written as i hat and j hat. So those are some common notations for vectors that you will see. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Uh, for the example here, I'd like to draw the vector given by A and its terminal point is 1, 3, 5. So now all of a sudden we are in three dimensions. Remember this is our x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. To draw this, I'm going to make a little rectangular prism. So I'm going to come out one in the x direction, go over three in the y. So let's label that a one and a three. And then we need to go up one, two, three, four, five in the z. 
So if we try to draw that, I'm going to get a little rectangular prism. Okay, and the front corner of that rectangular prism, that is the terminal point. Okay, there's my point P135, and to draw the vector whose terminal point is 135, I'm going to put my starting point, my initial point at the origin, and I'm going to drive out to that point and put the arrow. So there is my vector, vector V. Or in this case, vector A. Great. Okay, so now we want to talk about some operations with vectors. So we're going to talk about addition of vectors. So let's let vector A and vector B be two vectors. whose components are given as follows. So let's let vector A be given with components A1, A2, and if we're an R2, that's it. And if we're an R3, we would go up to three components, and if we're an Rn, we go all the way up to n components. And we'll let vector B be given very generally with a B1, a B2, and a B3, all the way up through B sub n. Okay, and so vector addition happens component-wise if we're looking at a plus b to add up those two vectors we're just adding up a1 plus b1 in the first component, second component a2 plus b2, third component a3 plus b3, all the way up through the nth component a sub n plus b sub n. Okay, let's do an example here. So for our example, let's plot the vector u, which is over 1 up 2, and that has been done for us. It's right here in red, so I'll denote that as vector u. And let's also look at vector v, which is over 5 up 3. That's also been plotted for us right here. Let's find the sum u plus v. Okay, so if we want to do this, we're going to take vector u plus vector v, and we're going to be adding the components, so let's write down what the components are. For vector u, it was a 1, 2, and we're adding that vector to vector v, which is 5, 3. To perform the addition, the addition happens component-wise, so I've got a 1 plus 5 in the first component, and then in the second component, I've got a 2, plus 3. So final answer, u plus v looks like 6 comma 5. And if we do the vector addition here, if we plot that out, let's plot that, so we're going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so, and we're going to go up 5, so that vector will look something like the following. Okay, And so what happens here, it's a tip-to-tail addition property, or you can call it the triangle property, but what, what ends up happening is if you were to take vector u and put it tip-to-tail with vector v, you get the resultant vector, which is the sum. And that's why it's called the triangle law. I'll write that down. Okay, last thing we want to talk about here is a scalar multiplication. So again, let's let vector A be a vector with n components. So we'll say A1, A2, all the way up through A sub n. And let K be a real scalar, just a real number. So now we're looking at scalar multiplication. So k times a just looks like 
k multiplied component-wise. So scalar multiplication also happens component-wise, and so we see that k multiple all the way through our vector. Let's take a look at an example here. So in this particular example, we're looking at a vector u, which is 2, 3, that has been plotted for us. So that's u. And now let's find 2u. So to find 2u, that's going to be 2 times the vector 2, 3, scalar multiplication. Multiplying that 2 times each component, we're going to get a 4, 6. And so plotting that vector, we're going to go over 4, up 6. Whoops. So over 4, up 6, and that's just going to be a stretching out of vector u. So it's a stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, and that's what scalar multiplication does. It takes our original vector and stretches it or maybe squishes it if it's less than 1. Let's look at what negative 1u does to our vector. So we've got a negative 1 times vector u, so that's negative 1 times the vector 2, 3. Each component gets multiplied by negative 1, so our answer looks like negative 2, negative 3. And if we plot that on the screen, we would go negative 2, negative 3, and so again we end up on the same line, it's just being stretched now in the other direction, actually we're shooting through the origin, and that's what the effect of the negative sign had.